guys welcome this is a general reading for the collective of all zodiac signs it is your october 2024 love tarot monthly energy update yay um this is the second month in a row that we begin the month with a powerful lunation so we've just in the energy as i record this of the new moon in Libra with an annular solar eclipse. It's so interesting because it's happening sort of as I'm recording this and the quality of light is so interesting that I had to go into my lighting settings and tool with it a bit because I, it's like everything's got a very golden hue. I know, it's so interesting. So um, yeah, new moon blessings to all. I did do the new moon reading that was uploaded yesterday. It is not too late to watch that. Um, in fact, perfect timing, so go watch that. Uh, lots of good messages and information about the new moon eclipse. Um, and this reading is, again, for all signs, and uh, I take the month week by week for you, your beloved, and the connection. In the extended, I will go individual zodiac signs and do mini spreads for all of you, so there's a link below for that. Do keep in mind, though, it, this is still general, so, um, you know, if you're interested in a private reading, there's a link below every single video that will take you to the booking page. You just have to scroll a little bit. Okay, here we go. I'm pulling from Fortune Oracle to activate the reading. Let's see what the month holds. Oh, beautiful. Card 34. I love the spirituality of it. Um, unity, a, divine, a time of divine understanding, renewal, peace, and hope you radiate and attract great love well isn't that perfect for the new moon in libra mm -hmm. since that's all about relationships and we are in libra season so i'm loving the unity theme i want to i almost want to say was that our september card too i don't know i'm feeling like it might be could be I'm, I'm, I'm giving that quizzical look because it feels very familiar. Anywho, I'll go ahead and pull the spread. I will clarify wherever I feel drawn to most. Let's go October 2024. Love Tarot monthly energy update. I am using Curious Creatures. <laughs> Because, you know, October is kind of a funky month. Ooh, we have the Knight of Swords as our overall energy. Yeah, and that, came, that was a powerful part of the, let me see the photograph of the new moon reading. Where did we have, yeah. This is the same card that came out as the opener, the overall energy for the new moon reading. Same card. So it is this sense of urgency to clear the air, my friends. Yes, the time is now. Oh, my. Okay, good. So we're moving the vertical. Week one, week two, week three, week four. Top row is your person. Middle row is your energy. Bottom row is the connection. And of course, these two rows can be reversed. Um, take it as it resonates for you. So we're coming into week one here of the month of October. Your person, we've got this queen of pentacles energy, which is usually... Um, it does speak to a feminine archetype of life partner, so stick a pin in that. But it's also about something we can count on. It's steady, it's dependable, um, kind of has its act together. And you're coming in here, five of cups, maybe looking back with either some regrets, maybe some mistakes. It's, it's, it's looking to the past, look at this pretty little creature. Um, but it could also be a sense of sorrow, like something that's you feel may 
um, be slipping through your fingers in the connection though we've got the strength card and that's why i'm almost seeing this queen of pentacles not as a person but as an energy like this person sort of kind of being um supportive in some way shape or form this the strength cards where we help each other out and so i'm almost seeing that there may be something that you may be feeling a little sorrowful about and that the connection is a source of support and even if you are in some form of separation or distance from your person you may be getting some anchoring from them very possible um, but that's sort of how I'm feeling week one. There is, they are a little bit more settled and you are um, coming through a little bit less, um, you're looking backwards. You're looking to the past with some form of, um, you know, longing, sadness or regrets. And the strength card in the connection is a getting up and over that. Okay, moving into week two, we have your person here with the nine of cups, almost saying, you know, things are good. I'm not, I'm not gonna rock the boat. They're kind of, yeah, look. Look at this little mirror cat, kind of looking, if that's what that is. Looking up going, yeah, this feels good. Um, why change anything? And <laughs> you're coming in howling at the moon. So the moon is almost like, yeah, I'm not feeling good. Something's unsteady here between week one and week two for you. Maybe insecurities coming to the surface, something you're not feeling secure about. And I'm not saying you're an insecure person. There's a difference. We're talking about a relationship. So, right, things come up and you're like, no, this isn't this isn't feeling good to me. You might be feeling dandy. It isn't feeling good to me. And then we've got that King of Wands. Double Leo energy here, week one to week two. The King of Wands, though, is interesting because sometimes that can come through as the unavailable lover. So we may have this in reverse. We'll have to see with some clarifiers. I'll definitely hit that. And that may be this person sort of like, yeah, I'm feeling good. And therefore, they may grow complacent. And that may sort of unnerve you a bit in week two. Moving on to week three, there, there's this Queen of Swords and you've got Queen of Cups. Look at the Queen of Cups, looking at the Queen of Swords. Kind of like, yeah, I'm all in my feels here and you're the Ice Queen. Um, so there is a little bit of, you know, sort of a disconnect, but for the relationship, the focus is now turning to the future. And so the Queen of Swords can be a little bit icy and that may be something that hurts your feelings. And I know we have queens here. Please don't let that mess with your head. It doesn't mean it's all feminine. The queen element and the king element bring different nuances. So we've got some queen energy going on here, but the queen of swords is very different from the king of swords, right? The king of swords is more the strategist. The queen of swords is the truth seeker, truth teller, but she can also be sort of razor sharp and um, icy cold. The king of swords would be evasive. Okay, do you see the difference? So I feel like in week three, when you're feeling insecure in week two and moving into being more vulner vulnerable in week three, your person goes from week two where they're like, well, but I think everything's fine, I'm feeling good, to week three getting a little ice cold. Do you see how that feels? It's a different energy. And because we're looking down the road to something more long-term. And so you need some feedback that you may not get. And then in week four, we have your person with eight of pentacles. That's good because then in eight of pentacles, they're like, all right, well, this is something maybe we need to work on. And four of cups, there you are sort of looking forward forlorn like i'm very disillusioned right now i don't know that i'm very happy about this but don't spend too long there because communication will open up at the end of the month and there may be lots of movement here with how to work on it and sort of things sort of close out in a more positive direction because at least the communication sort of picks back up 
So I'm, I'm, I'm just jumping right into the reading because there is some information about the month and I'm flipping it around from what I normally do. I usually do the Oracle, give you a whole spiel about the month and then save the reading for the end. I'm doing it reverse this time to see if it has any impact on my views. Okay. Cause last month didn't get so many. Okay. So here we go. Knight of Swords. Knight of Pentacles, oh my gosh. The Fool and the Page of Swords. All right, so it's almost like uh, there's this sense of urgency to clear the air, but you won't have enough information. And so there's this, I want to be sure I don't overstep. I want to be sure I'm not taking unnecessary risks. Fool, right? So uh, the Knight of Pentacles moves a lot more slowly, um, does its due diligence, right? Moves very deliberately and very methodically with a plan. The problem is, it's like you may not get your answers quick enough, and that may set up whoever you are here for all that unnecessary disappointment because you'll slow the roll of what really needs to be dealt with quick, fast, and in a hurry, if you understand my point. So I do think there's a sense of urgency to clear the air, but I think that, um, like, I need more information, I need more information, and overly concerned about taking unnecessary risks may slow the whole process down. Okay, so for your person here, uh, week one, Queen of Pentacles, no, I'm not concerned about that. Nine of Cups to the Queen of Swords. That's where two, week two to week three. Right. Oh, there's our strength card again. Now look at this. Very interesting. I'm going to hold these up for you. We have the Lovers and the Devil card. Please take note. Same exact card. If you look at the cards... You have the two figures, masculine and feminine figures. You have these two completely separate, choosing each other of their free will. We call this a card of choice, the lover's card. In this, in this picture, they're sort of chained to each other and to the devil figure. In this, we have the archangel, the sun in the background. In this, they're sort of lorded over by the menacing figure in a dark foreboding background. So you can see quite clearly that there's no free will here, okay? It has a hold on you. It's about control um, and fear. And in this case, we have all that lovely free will and choice. Now, the only card in the deck that overcomes the devil is, wait for it, the strength card. So I sort of love that we have the strength card, which is present already in your connection in week one to sort of pull in on the reins of this devil. Because I feel what I'm seeing here from this person is a need to control the situation. That's what that devil is, right? Nine of Cups, lovers. What's the issue there? Oh, and this is what I'm really clarifying. What's the issue? Why do they get icy, Queen of Swords? Because maybe what's happening here is you want more from the connection. Well, of course you do. Ten of Pentacles is up for grabs in week three. The conversation, the communication, where is this going? Where is this headed? Do you even want life partnership? Are we even like you know, in the realm of that? And they're sitting there saying, well, but things feel pretty good to me right so and with the devil we're talking about control and i like seeing the strength card there because it's almost like yeah well I, it's it's definitely an issue that i have to overcome on some level this person knows internally between week two and week three yeah i got a little bit of a control issue yeah i don't i really do and i need to overcome it it's not pretty so they have an internal awareness of it 
They won't talk to you about it, but they have an awareness. Queen of Swords, they get a little icy, a little cool, because they're coming from control mechanisms. Okay, so that's week two to week three for this person. And then by the time we get to week eight, we have the eight of, week eight, week four, we have the eight of pentacles. Two of Wands, Eight of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles. Sure, because even though they get a little icy cool and maybe very pointed and very sharp, they're aware. I, I got to figure out what I want. And this is something that, you know, I know I need to work through and that we need to work through. The Nine of Pentacles is interesting in the unconscious awareness because I have a feeling that the Nine of Pentacles is usually coming through as a single person in the tarot. And so for this person, it might be about like, I don't really want to be alone or their thoughts about you and how they admire you and how you are worth working through it. Does that make sense? Um, because the Eight of Pentacles is about focusing in on solutions to a problem, okay? Doing the work, relationships take work. Uh, I've got to sort out what I want and be prepared to work at it. So I think from week three to week four, we get to a point where this person is aware of their own control or need to control or patterns of control, whatever it is, wherever it's coming from. And then they, they realize, well, I got to figure out what I want here because this is not good. Okay. And that's some self-awareness. So I, I see where that's, where that's going. So let's go to you now. Um, week one to week two, five of cups to the moon. Yeah, Ten of Swords, Knight of Cups, King of Swords. So now you'll see the difference there. You see this person as the king, um, right? Being cool, distant, aloof. Um, Five of Cups, Ten of Swords. What you're really wanting is their emotional vulnerability, an offer of love. You're getting none of it. Week one to week two, it starts to create that insecurity. Right? Like, why is this not happening? Looking back at maybe a painful ending, maybe other painful endings, because the Five of Cups may not necessarily be about this connection. The Five of Cups is retrospective, looking back at loss, looking back at pain, looking at this person not really giving you the warmth that you need, the emotional availability you need, the vulnerability on their part you need, because they're all saying, no, I'm, I'm good. I feel good. I'm pretty comfortable. And maybe they're trying to be supportive, but you're not feeling it week one to week two. Oh my goodness, right? So then while your nerves are up and you're feeling triggered, we go from week two to week three The moon to the queen of cups. There's our knight of swords. You're really needing to clear the air. Um, you're really needing to understand where, where things stand. Understand where things stand. Get the clarity. You might be week two to week three like a cat on a hot tin roof. Nine of wands underneath is um, the hermit. Queen of cups. Um, very possible that you may feel the urge to sort of retreat. Uh, that, that hermit coming from the bottom of the deck is unconscious awareness. You may unconsciously sort of find yourself pulling back, not answering calls, uh, uh, sort of not being in, uh, very approachable, maybe not even communicating with close friends or family because all of that energy, um, it's a lot to manage your nerves and anxieties with the moon and the queen of cups and the nine of swords all coming off this five of cups. I feel week two, week three of October could be a little bumpy. Mm-hmm. 
stick a pin in that, right? So then week three to week four, Queen of Cups to the Four of Cups. The sun will come out tomorrow. Ah. Yeah, you're you're kind of like, all right. <laughs> I'll wait. Here's the hanged man. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. And that's where we get that sort of forlorn, disappointment, disenchanted kind of energy. Not necessarily losing hope, um, but real disappointment. Yeah, and maybe an energy of like, I, you know, I really feel such good feelings for this person, but nothing's happening. There's no passion, where all the happiness is I really love this person or have such good feelings for them and it's things are growing stagnant and so that's your energy we went through their energy let's look at the connection strength card king of wands week one to week two there's your five of cups five of wands temperance Right, Because this person is kind of coming through the energy of the King of Wands. It's like it's causing tension because they're not really available for you. It's not that they're not supportive, Queen of Pentacles. I feel like you get some kind of weird support, but it doesn't really show itself in the way that you need. Right, So here's strength trying to sort of overcome an obstacle, but the tension is still there. The conflict is still there. And with temperance underneath, it's like there's no, in the connection, um, there's an, uh, something that's going to work itself out over time, but it doesn't feel that way. So the strength card is the two of you sort of piggybacking off each other, giving each other a leg up, sort of overcoming obstacles of conflict, but yours is backward facing. Yours is coming from the past. So if you haven't already done so, especially if you're new to the channel, the whole last series of readings, Aries through Pisces from the middle of September to the end of September was a special spread to help you look at past relationships and how they are impacting a current relationship and maybe even blocking new love. So definitely check that out because that's important, especially for this reading for October where there's some tension in river city here and you're not necessarily getting what you need the availability or this person uh, claiming the connection claiming the love showing up being available and it's causing problems week one to week two it's not that you can't overcome it um it's that you're sort of taking a trip down memory lane and it's adding to the disappointment and the conflict and the tension so now let's go to, we have this difficult energy here, uh, week two to week three for both of you. Let's take a look at that. King of Wands to the Ten of Pentacles. Right? So when someone is only available when it's convenient for them, we sort of have this shutting down. Both of you kind of pulling back a little bit, a little more guarded in your communication. But it's interesting with the Nine of Wands, still persevering, still hanging in there. And of course, we're, we're starting to look toward the future. But this Four of Pentacles is coming from this person who isn't really wanting to talk about it, who isn't really wanting to talk about the future. And that may be why they're sort of not available. Um, very selective because that's where the devil energy is coming in because it's landing on that nine of cups and they're kind of like but i'm kind of happy with the way things are do we really have to talk about the future do you see what i'm saying and that comes through a lot sometimes people just have a funny thing about that like why do we have to talk about where things are going where are they heading uh, i 
Aren't you happy with where things are? So that's sort of the, the lay of the land I'm getting here. But then we go from the Ten of Pentacles to the Eight of Wands again, week three to week four. What I'm saying is it comes back. Ten of Pentacles, Hierophant, Commitment, the beginnings of life partnership. Ooh, Five of Swords. So let's talk about the gaslighting here, right? <laughs> Things might be good for you, they're not so good for me. Well, it's almost as if the Five of Swords is coming in in an interesting way, almost like giving in. Like the, It can be a card of, of defeat. So uh, this person, finally, Queen of Swords, you know, with her sharp edge and her cool demeanor, finally going, yeah, no, okay, fine, let's talk about it. What do you want to know? You see what I'm saying? So I'm not seeing the Five of Swords in a, in a terribly negative way. I'm seeing the communication about the future and what your beliefs are and their beliefs and what your vision is, uh, what your th beliefs are around conventional committed relationships, marriage in the future and all that. So I'm not so worried about the Five of Swords. Um, it is coming from the bottom of the deck. So that would be my only little red flag is you may want to dive a little deeper to be sure that somebody isn't just feeding you what you want to hear. Um, but I do see open communication more between week three and toward the end of the month. Okay, so that is what I have for you for um, the month of October. And what I'm going to do right now, and this whole reading is time stamped in case I forgot to mention that, is the next section I'm going to do the review of the astrology for the month of October. So if you're interested, hang around. That's coming up right now. Okay, so... October, you'll be happy to know, is a slimmer month in some ways, but still a bit intense. Um, obviously, we're in Libra Mansion, um, so happy birthday to our Libra babies. So our conscious awareness is going to be focused on balance, but we're in the eclipse wormhole. And so we're unlikely to be feeling the harmony as evidenced by, um, that Libra season promises. And we start the month right off here. Um, Mercury is also in Libra. Mars is in his detriment in Cancer. Uh, and Venus is not so happy in the emotionally intense sign of Scorpio. So that's sort of where we, where we begin. Um, and as I said in yesterday's new moon reading, the eclipse is new moon in Libra, and that solar eclipse is uh, hitting us right as we get the month started here today on the second. So we're setting intentions for better relationships and that elusive balance that Libra brings, but black moon Lilith is exactly conjunct this new moon. So the lunation itself and the entire lunar, lunar cycle that it kicks off for the next six months until we have the full moon in Libra um, has some guaranteed shadow work in store. So it's also a south node eclipse. So we're focusing on releasing the past, which is why I did that series of readings that I did for the last two weeks. Go check them out. Um, and if you missed the reading that I did, I do recommend you watch it to support your intention setting ritual as this opportunity will not come back around until 2033. This is the last new moon in Libra eclipse until 2033. So I don't know about you, but if I were you, I wouldn't want to live with you know, hanging on to a lot of crap for the next nine years. Yeah. Okay. So Mars begins his retrograde shadow on October 4th. And so that's the shadow phase where we're leading up to him turning around. It's not the retrograde, it's the pre-shadow phase. And so between now and December 5th, the planet of action will be hinting at some of the issues around projects, goals, work, sex, anger, um, and all things Mars. 
that will come up in some challenging ways when he finally turns around in two months. Um, part of the new moon features um, an intense, I, I said this yesterday, I'm looking at my notes, features an emotionally intense grand water trine. So um, trine is a triangle, grand water trine between Mars and Cancer, right? He ain't, ha he ain't happy there. Venus and Scorpio, she's not happy there. And Saturn and Pisces, he's not happy there. But because they're in a trine, that's very easy geometry, very supportive geometry, okay? So Saturn's involvement in all of this makes it a bit of a lesson. And the level um, of deep feels between October 4th and 8th, so that's first week to second week, deep feels, right? Five of cups in the moon for you. Um uh as this trine begins to unfold will bring up a ton of deep emotions and the potential for relationship dynamics that may need attention Ta -da! so we're not out of the woods of the amplification of eclipse season even though this is the final one um and we're now in a lunar cycle kicked off by an eclipse Life has been bumpy and difficult, and this month features the beginning of a two-month-long sextile between Jupiter and Chiron. So sextile is also pretty easy geometry. I'll just say that much. Um, so hitting on the 12th of October, and then again on November 1st, the planet of expansion, which is Jupiter, and the great healer, Chiron, are offering an opportunity for a beautiful, expansive healing as we finish out this year. So doesn't that feel good? Like it's it's like beginning here this month and will follow us until the end of the year. Mercury is going to leave the ruling sign of Virgo and enter Scorpio on October 13th. So communication will get a little more intense, right? Isn't that going to start right around here, week, week two to week three? We're going to try to communicate, but it isn't going to go well. But then it reprises back at the end of the month and goes a little bit better. Okay, so it's going to get a little bit intense and we are going to become more mindful um, of the need for change and transformation for the next two and a half weeks with no retrograde in sight. Uh, we do have a full moon in Aries on October 17th. So that's going to be right around week three, full moon in Aries. Um, well, week two to week three, we have the full moon. And the moon will be conjunct Chiron, that wounded healer. And so this full moon will be very deeply healing. But since full moons are release mechanisms, and this one is particularly healing, any endings that come will likely be for the best. So if something explodes, which I did not get any explosions in this reading, but if something does, because it is a general, not a private, just know it will likely be for the best. Um, Venus leaves the sign of her detriment in Scorpio and enters Sagittarius on October 18th. She will be in Jupiter sign for three and a half weeks. Jupiter rules Sagittarius. Um, and so our emotional body will be curious and wanting more stimulation and we will be lit up by things like travel, education, and spiritual seeking. So think the higher mind, right? Especially in matters of the heart. So for those of you who are really invested in like sacred connections and spiritual bonds and twin flames, that may all be heightened um once she moves into sagittarius on the 18th so more again toward week three and beyond on october 22nd we move into the scorpio mansion which signals that we're moving toward winter and themes of you know death and rebirth um where we get to have the rebirth that comes with spring scorpio is where we focus on growth, change, and transformation, and the internal intensity that connects our lives with passion and drive. So those are the highlights for the month. 
We have the new moon in Libra lunar eclipse today, October 2nd. Mars begins his retrograde shadow, October 4th. We have the grand water trine that is a part of this new moon, um, perfecting on October 4th through 8th. So that's week one, right? We have uh, Jupiter sextiling Chiron on the 11th, beginning of week two. We have Mercury and Scorpio there, week three, two to week three, uh, week two to week three yeah, on the 13th. We have the full moon in Aries um, on the 17th, October 17th. So again, end of week two, moving into week three. We have Venus in Sagittarius, week three on October 18th. We have the Scorpio Mansion um, beginning on October 22nd. So that's wrapping up there week three and nothing else happening, which is why in week four, everything comes together. Okay, okay. So can you feel me? All right, that's what I have for you. If this has enlightened you, if you've been enjoying the monthly energy updates, please do make sure that you subscribe below. <laughs> and if you want to follow me to the extended, where in consideration of this month and all that I have covered here, I go sign by sign and do little mini readings for your pleasure. Um, yeah, there are a few minutes each. Y'all get a main card and then clarifiers to explain the overall energy for you for the month okay good for sun moon rising venus for you or your beloved that's what i've got for you i'm headed there now see you there bye